Hello and welcome to another Hot Pixel production tutorial video. My name is Gerald Bellina, and in this particular video, we're going to take a quick look at how to create a seamlessly looping animated GIF for deployment on the web or a social media platform or wherever you choose to stick it. What we're going to need in order to achieve this are two pieces of software, a video editor of your choosing, that could be Adobe Premiere, it could be Adobe After Effects, Final Cut Pro, whatever you tend to use, and Adobe Photoshop. So let's dive in. So for this particular tutorial video, I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere. And right now, what you can see here, I have a 17 second clip of a cinema graph that I produced a while ago. And as is always the case when trying to do this, the, the trick is, if I just position the playhead here, I have my uh, looping button here um, activated so the, the playhead will just continue loop. When it gets to the end, it will do that. And you just get that jump from the end to the beginning. So what we need to do, uh, we just need to uh, trick this so that it will just rotate seamlessly without any significant jump um, from beginning to end. Now, in order to do this, what, what I need to do is just position my playhead over the, uh, right about the center point of the clip itself. It doesn't have to be exact. I know that this is a 14 second clip, so I just want to position it around about seven seconds. Now what I'm going to do is tap the C key to bring up my scissor tool and make a surgical incision right here at the playhead in order to cut that in half. Now what I want to do is I want to grab the back end, and I have two tracks instantiated here, I'm going to grab the back end, bring it to the uppermost track and bring it to the beginning. Consequently I want to take the beginning um, track and just bring that so it now goes sort of towards the back. And the key is that these two have to overlap. Now, by how much they overlap, that will depend on the success of it to get a transition in the crossover. Um, so it's not particularly noticeable. The other thing that we have to do is I'm just going to tap my P key to bring up my pen tool. And I'm going to come up to the opacity control bar here on the clip above. And I'm going to click and make a control point. I'm going to come to the end, click and create another control point. And I'm now going to bring this control point down so that this clip's opacity is reduced to zero. So it's going to go from 100% and it's going to ramp off all the way down to zero. So let's give that a play and see what we've got. Okay, fairly noticeable. This next phase is really pretty much trial and error and it's dependent very heavily on the kind of clip you've got. Um, you know, whether it's moving water or whatever the motion is. The way that we can adjust this is m either to drag this bottommost uh, clip further over towards the start and then increase the ramp off of the opacity, making sure that the control point is definitely after the transition, because if it starts here, then obviously you'll just, that will start, go yeah, you'll get that kind of flicker. So let's just make sure that this control point is after the overlap, just about there, and see how this looks. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Let's see if we can just bring this in a little bit more. Extend the ramp off a little bit more. Let's have a look. Trust me, I'm not going to spend all night doing this because uh, that's something I would do. You know, but that's what you've got to do. You've got to kind of find this, the sweet spot in terms of the overlap and the transition from the 100% opacity to zero opacity of the clip above. That's not bad. And when it gets to the end, we'll see what happens. There, that's the trick. As I say, you have to bring the uh, what was the end of the clip to the, uh, to the beginning and the beginning of the clip towards the end. And then by creating a transition in between, you then create that seamless loop. Okay, great. So that uh, looks uh, pretty good. So what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to export this um, out as a self-contained movie and then bring it into Photoshop in order to create the animated GIF. So here's the exported movie I've just uh, done in Premiere. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to click hold on it. And I'm just going to throw it onto Photoshop icon. So now what Photoshop has gone and done, it's gone and read the video file and it's created a video track uh, for us. 
If you do that and you don't see anything down here, that just means that you don't have your timeline window open. So all you need to do is just come up under window and select timeline. One of the added bonuses of finishing this off in Photoshop is that we can now make any adjustments we need to uh, just like we would any static image. And by that I mean we could add, you know, we maybe wanted to add some more contrast, we could just add a adjustment layer and you know, maybe play around with uh, adding maybe a little bit more contrast in the midtones there. Conceivably we could also maybe add a hue saturation or just something like that. If, say for example, it's maybe a little bit too uh, saturated, we could back off the saturation. Or conversely, you know, if it's a little bit flat looking, we could maybe boost a bit of vibrancy by increasing saturation there. So again, you know, this is, as I say, this is actually something pretty cool that we can now do um, with this GIF. Now all we need to do is to export this as an animated GIF. For me personally, I just like to use the um, keyboard shortcuts and three modifier keys are needed. That's um, Command, Option, Shift, and then just tap the S key. Obviously then on a PC that would just be Control, Alt, Shift, and then just tap the S key. And now here we are in the uh, Safer web window, and what we then need to do is we need to come and make sure that the file type that is selected is changed to GIF. Maybe it's come up as JPEG, but we need to swap that over to GIF, okay? Convert to sRGB, well, might as well leave that checked. Um, colors, I'm gonna leave it at 256. Um, sometimes by reducing the number of colors, you can slightly reduce the uh, resulting file size, but for the most part, I just tend to uh, leave it as uh, 256. Uh, we have our image size, that's great, that's 600 pixels wide by 400 deep. And most importantly, we just need to come down here under animation and look at our looping options. By default, it comes up as loop once. We just need to click and swap that over to forever. Now that will then continuously play ad infinitum. Now we need to do is just hit save, give it a name and just save it. So we just navigate to the folder where I saved that in and here we are. Kelly's Field 5, I'm just going to grab it and throw it onto Google, and there it is. I'm not going to sit here watching it for too long because it's going to go on forever, and I'm sure you've got far better things to do with your life than just sit here forever watching this. So let's just also just have a, a very quick um, uh, chat about file size. The resulting GIF from that uh, export came out around about 19 megabytes. Now for places like Facebook or social media websites, uh, th that's not going to be too much of a problem. The problem will be obviously if you were creating this maybe for your own website or somebody else's website. Now the two main components in terms of dictating the file size are firstly and probably obviously the actual overall size of the uh, image itself. As I say, this one was at 600 pixels wide by 400 deep, but also, most importantly, is going to be the length of the clip. Um, now, on this, as I say, this was a 17 second uh, movie clip, and that was very long. Let's just hop over to uh, Facebook, so I can just show you. This was a animated GIF I created you know, a few days ago, still seamlessly looping. The clip I used for this was only three seconds long. And even at 600 by 400 pixels in terms of image size, because that was a much, much shorter clip, let's say three seconds, that then resulted in a file of only around about three and a half megabytes. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. I'll say goodbye for now and catch you on the next one.